Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. You're looking at a, uh, a Gilfillan radio. This belongs to my dad and I just picked it up a couple days ago. Man, as you can uh, probably hear the audio, it's extremely uh, distorted. Let me cut the volume up. A little better uh, audio about mid-range, but I'm going to go ahead and leave the volume down. You also notice there's some AC hum. This radio has not been recapped, so it has the original electrolytics, but I did check the uh, current flow, and it, it looks to be just a hair high. Not surprising. I'm sure some of the caps in here have leakage, uh, which would drive those numbers north. But I had a subscriber of mine reach out to me and ask me if I'd ever done any signal tracing. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a couple steps. And it just so happens this radio is the uh, you know a perfect example for doing some signal tracing. So um, there's a, another piece of test equipment here um, that I actually built uh, years ago. It's just a little simple signal tracer. Uh, using a crystal diode, a couple caps, and uh, I think a couple resistors. I'll pop the back off in uh, just a bit and uh, we'll take a look at it. Um, but I do have an input probe uh, which will allow me to detect the uh, vid or excuse me the audio as well as uh, any RF signals. And the output of that is actually just feeding some amplified speakers. So it's a real simple design. Again, we'll take a look at it. And then I have my conventional audio generator and signal generator, and we may end up having to use it as well. So let me get things a little set up here and just make sure we're ready to go. And then uh, we'll start doing some troubleshooting, see where we end up. Okay, when doing signal tracing, um, I've done it both ways. Many times I'll start right in the, uh, the audio side and just work my way back toward the RF. So I think it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I'm guessing the problem on this radio is in the audio stage, just based on the uh, distortion that I hear. And, you know, for all I know, it's related to the speaker itself. But um, I think just for this example, I'm gonna start with the first RF amplifier and just work from the RF side all the way back to the um, the output tube. We'll see what we get. Okay, uh, let's get started doing a little signal tracing. So I'm not uh, using a signal generator at this point. Again, I'm going to use my uh, little RF tracer that I've uh, made some time back. And again, I'm just using some uh, little cheap Logitech speakers for the output so we can listen in. And again, I'll reference the schematic here, maybe on a side-by-side -side or picture-in-pitch -picture review um, here in just a moment. But I'm going to start here with the uh, RF uh, tube at 6A8. And again, we'll reference the schematic here in a minute so you guys can follow along. But um, I'm going to go to the grid itself on the tube. And not sure if you can hear that or not. a little bit of signal and I would expect that signal to be really low again that was the grid cap and uh, here's grid one for the tube and again I'm just tuned to a local station here to use as a reference point now we'll go to the plate of the 6A8 so there's some hum and distortion there but again there is some signal uh, in my opinion, it seems like the gain in that stage uh, seems a little suspect and low, but the uh, audio quality itself is not distorted, so let's move forward. Next up, the uh, RF passes through an IF filter, and in this case, uh, assuming I am looking at the right uh, schematic, it's uh, preset for 460 kilocycles. And again, that signal feeds back into the uh, 6K7 tube, which is being used as an IF amplifier. So um, 
Let me put the leads there. Okay, that's the grid itself. And hopefully you can hear that audio. Now we'll go back to the plate, which again, I have these tubes pre-marked. He's going back to the same configuration of linebackers. Is it the middle linebacker flanked by seniors Jeff Schottmer and Shaquille Rashad? Talk with Rashad this week about... Okay, you can definitely uh, hear an improvement, and that's what you'd expect to hear. Again, as the amplify, uh, amplification itself increases. So again, that's the uh, plate of the uh, 6K7. So let's uh, hear again the audio using the... Uh, Signal tracer and the amplified speakers. Listen to the quality here. Okay, now let me cut the volume up on the radio. We'll compare the two. Big difference. Okay, again, here's the uh, you know, radio again playing with the volume turned about three fourths of the way up. Um, next, the signal leaves that uh, 6K7, which is being used as an IF um, amplifier. And we'll, we'll go through the second IF filter here. And uh, this is the point where we'll separate the uh, RF and audio and feed the audio off of um, the 6F5 tube back into the 6F6 to be um, amplified. So uh, quickly we'll go down to the 6H6 again which is on the uh, fed by the uh, secondary side of the uh, IF and it's a diode tube and again we'll look at both plates and in this case the plates are tied together so I think I've got uh, those marked okay again let me turn this down 320 just a moment ago things not so close down in South Florida where number six Clemson has a 58 to nothing lead on the Canes so you can see there our audio quality is extremely clear and again, we've worked our way back through the second IF filter. And again, no adjustments have been made to the IF filter. And again, if I bring the volume up, we, we, can see still, we still have a considerable uh, distortion. So let's move up to the uh, 6F5 tube next. Another reference point, too, I want to check. Um, I'm going to look at the, uh, the high side of the uh, potentiometer or the volume control and again you can hear there that our audio itself is clear there as well just as ready for the day ahead as you are see you babe have a good day Duke okay and then that center tap or taper there for the uh, the volume control goes through a uh, capacitor and it feeds back up to the uh, grid as you can see here on the 6F5. So I'm going to go to the 6F5 tube and again at this point I'll need to cut the volume control up on the radio because the signal will be going, the audio signal itself will be feeding through the uh, volume control. So so still distorted on the speaker itself and then on the still clear on the uh, the temporary speakers I have in place here connected to the uh, signal tracer probe okay moving along to that 6F5 Let's uh, listen in here on the plate itself and see what we get. And again, I'm going to need to use the volume control here, the taper, to bring this up. Okay, 
Okay, it's very distorted at uh, full volume and about half volume. I can make it out. But if I go here, I'm going to just bring this up a little closer to the ear level. Let me see if I can get this on camera. So the signal distortion itself is at both locations. So again, the signal quality going in on the grid itself um, seems to be fine. And when you listen to the output, again, the plate itself that feeds over to the, uh, the grid of the audio tube, 6F6, is distorted. So uh, let's look next at the uh, 6F6, the grid, and the plate, and uh, see if we have that same distortion. Okay, again, we're going to be checking the grid as well as the plate on the uh, 6F6, again, which is the uh, audio power tube. So again, you can hear... The distortion, and again, I can minimize that distortion uh, with about maybe half gain or so on the uh, potentiometer. So let's go to the grid. Maybe hard to separate that, but I'm hearing the same distortion out of my uh, speakers tied to the probe as well as the speaker itself. We'll move over to the to the plate. So again, I think you can tell there, I'm trying to hold the speaker a little closer, that same distortion is at uh, both points. So for whatever reason, it appears that the, uh, the 6F5 tube itself, again, the grid, um, sounds fairly good coming in. And again, when you go to the output, The output's extremely uh, distorted. So I have not checked any of these tubes. So um, let me do that first. Just to speed things up here a little bit, um, I didn't pull out the tube tester. I had a, a known good 6F5 tube that resided in the uh, that Jared radio that I'm working on. So. Um, Again, I know my audio quality is good there, so I'm going to just put the, uh, put the tube in here. And the uh, audio distortion is uh, not as bad, and there seems to be more audio output again. Four down, four Williams put the ball in the air. Yeah, a little... But again, you can tell the difference there. Again, this would be considered, um, you know, the input oh, yeah, to the circuit. Got eight man officiating crews these days, Jones, and they'll get you. So instead of first and ten of the thirteen, and this is what we're getting on the plate. still distorted there as well on the uh, power output tube 6F6. So the problem is, uh, you know, best I can tell using the signal tracer here, resides uh, between those two. Uh, we could check uh, tube voltages uh, real quick and see what we've got, but uh, I want I think what's suspect probably are the uh, two caps. Uh, 
which are C16 and C17. Uh, C16 is a bypass cap to ground, and uh, C17 is a coupling cap. So just for giggles, I know I'm going to have to replace these anyway. Let's just cut them out one at a time and uh, jump a new cap in and see if the uh, results improve any. They may or may not, but uh, regardless, that work needs to be performed. Alright, let's get in here and cut this cap. Again, this is a coupling cap. C16 on the schematic that runs between the um, detector itself and the uh, power output tube. So I've got that cut. Again the uh, value for that particular capacitor is uh, 0 0.02 microfarads. And I'm not sure if this is showing up on camera. Again I'm going to just jump one in. So again, we'll attach one side to the plate here, and the other side runs to the uh, grid of the uh, output tube. Let's flip on the uh, variac. Bring the voltage up. Okay, uh, I've got it stabilized about 110 volts. There's my nasty hum back again. Again, the electrolytics have not been replaced, so I'm sure I've got uh, AC ripple in the DC side. Uh, let's see what the audio sounds like, see if we still got the distortion here. They threw the flag for an illegal substitution, but we'll have to wait and see how it all shakes out for the official review. Okay, um, I'm sure there's more caps bad than this, but uh, begin showing how to use the uh, signal tracer, doing a little uh, divide and conquer. And it appears again that the uh, coupling cap, again, that uh, sits between the uh, 6F5 and the 6F6, was defective. And let's look now and listen to the uh, output tube here as well on the uh, little signal tracer. Jenny actually gets a tight uh, timeout save because the Cavaliers were trying to call timeout because there was clear confusion on the field. But after the flag was thrown incorrectly, so you can hear how clear that is. He'll move the ball back to about the 43 yard line. So, radio has a tone control as well. I had it completely uh, in the treble position. No score, 10-13 to go first quarter. Johns will turn around and hand it to Mizell, who bounces it to the outside. Tariel's giving him chase. And... So the rest of these caps will be replaced as well. Just wanted to create this demonstration real quick on how to... Uh, use the signal tracer and I'll uh, reference a couple photos here and we'll take a look at the uh, inside of this thing. I think I built it some probably 15 or 20 years ago and there's many schematics out there. We'll just kind of go through that and I'll show you what I've got but um, you can tell I mean uh, based on what we've got here just the uh, one cap was so bad it definitely compromised the performance of the radio. Muddled up for a while you don't see that a ton anymore in college football. 